there is agreement that some sort of remedy should be available for those who believe that their reputation has been undermined. This should take the form of a civil lawsuit by the person who claims their damaged reputation. Now, even given this consensus, the actual practice of defamation poses a potentially serious threat to the exercise of freedom of expression. And this means that a number of conditions need to be satisfied for defamation laws to be considered as truly necessary in a democratic society. Generally speaking, a court should not find a statement defamatory if it is true, it is privileged, meaning that it was spoken in Parliament or in a court, or if it's an accurate report of those proceedings, if it is an opinion or a satire, if it is a reasonable publication, meaning that the journalist made good faith efforts to verify and the publication is in the public interest, or the defamatory opinion is a statement of someone else and the journalist is merely reporting it without supporting it him or herself. If a statement is found to be defamatory, a court might require a correction or an apology to be published. It might award monetary damages for any loss that can be proved to have resulted from the defamation. Or it might award non-pecuniary damages. This is a monetary award to compensate moral suffering. Now, any monetary award should take account of the following factors. It should not create a chilling effect on media reporting. It should take into account the actual damage and suffering caused by the defamatory publication. And it should take into account the financial means available to the journalist or the publication. An award, and particularly one for non-pecuniary damages, that leads to the bankruptcy of the journalist or the media outlet concerned, will not normally be regarded as proportionate and necessary in a democratic society. The court has been particularly clear on this in the seminal case of Steele and Morris v. the United Kingdom, which concerned a defamation case taken against two protesters by the multinational food chain McDonald's. 